in the woods Afternoon, guys. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School, back with another segment in Dutch oven or cast iron cooking. We're going to do a nice little recipe today that's very quick and easy. I'll show you how to make that. It doesn't cost very much money. It'll feed at least two people, possibly even three. First thing we need to do is we need to make a fire, and I figure that every video is a teaching opportunity in itself to show other things besides just the main content of the video. And one of the things that I've noticed lately is I see a lot of people making fires the wrong way failing to build a fire lay and they just start something on fire and they start throwing stuff on top of it. And then they have to lay on the ground and blow it and blow their guts out and get hyperventilated trying to get oxygen to that fire because they didn't build a proper fire lay that lets oxygen underneath and rise up through the bundle so that they create that chimney effect to get their fire going really well. So we've got the tinder and stuff collected up. We've got our tinder bundle here or bird nest of dried or dry-ish I guess is the word for it tulip poplar inner bark and I do have some fat wood here if you're not familiar with what fat wood is you can check my 21st century long hunter series out a day in the life shows how to collect fat wood we're going to try to ignite this with the ferrocerium rod a little bit of a trick in itself we have to get some really fine shavings then we're going to try to get a proper fire lay and show you what that looks like before we cook today so stay with me okay so what we've got here is we have our fire pit and there's a V in the logs right here and I've set kindling material spread out over the top of that. Then I've put some kindling to the sides so that I have a hole number one for draft and number two for my bird nest or my ignited material to go inside of. That creates draft up which will ignite this kindling. That's a proper fire lay. Then we can add fuel once the kindling gets started. Once flames are above the current fuel that you have you're safe to add more fuel. That will knock the flames back down. Once the flames come up above the fuel again, you can add more. So we've got a fuel pile waiting. This is our basic kindling pile. We're going to get our bird nest and stuff ready, ignite it with our fat wood, and rock and roll. Okay, so step one here is we'll move this bird nest material. It's slightly damp, like I said. It has rained here today about three times. And I'm going to take a piece of fat wood that has a lot of resin in it. And I'm going to use my knife, not shaving like a feather stick to begin with, but scraping. And that will create fine, fine hairs of material that will contain a lot of fat wood or contain a lot of resin, excuse me. So I'm not trying to shave feather sticks here. I'm actually scraping resinous pieces of wood off of this. This will be highly combustible. Pine resin is a natural accelerant. We've talked about the difference between accelerants and fuels in a lot of other videos. And once I get a pile of this about the size of a quarter, that'll be enough. Then I'll go to the point of making some smaller stuff that I can use to ignite my tinder bundle with that's made out of the tulip poplar bark. I don't want to waste this fat wood because it's a resource. It's easier to find a lot of damp tulip poplar bark than it is fat wood. Fat wood is a resource because it contains an accelerant. So the next thing I need to do is process this tulip poplar bark. And to do that, I'm just going to take it and shred it basically. I'm going to shred it down to as small a fiber as I can get fine hairs are best. Like I said, this is a little bit damp. It's not too bad. I think it's too damp to light it directly with a ferrocium rod, so I don't want to take that chance. So I'll use a little bit of my natural accelerant with that. Both of these items came straight out of the woods right here, so it's not a big deal to find this stuff. And I'll get this as fine as I can get it. I'll have open flame to work with inside this bundle, so it's not like I'm trying to make a bird nest and I have to control with an ember. It doesn't have to be that meticulous because I'm going to have open flame. So as long as I get that portion of it in the middle and take the rest of the bundle and lay it right here and get this in the middle, I'll be fine. This 
is where I'm going to put this fine material that I shaved. It will go right here and I will light it on fire. Then I'll put that in my fire lay. Okay. So now, I'll step in here and decide this real quick so we can get a good view of what's going on. I think I've got this zoomed in pretty well for you. The object of the game now is to ignite this fluffy stuff. So we'll get our ferrocium rod over here. There we go. And once we got that, then we can just turn the bundle in and ignite it all. And put that inside just like this. Then we can close that gap a little bit and spread it out. Now we shouldn't have to kill ourselves breathing all over this thing because the draft should do the work. We should be able to just let it go all by itself. Okay, so while our fire's burning, and that's the key to this whole thing, I don't want to have to lay there and babysit that fire. Everything in your body is a resource, including your hydration. The more I've got to lay there and babysit that fire and blow on it to get it going, the more hydration I expend, the more calories I expend. That's not the object of the game. The object of the game is to start that fire and walk away. The next time I walk up to that fire will be to add fuel. So, let's talk about what we're going to cook. We've got a two quart lodge iron skillet or iron pot here very much like a dutch oven except it doesn't have any legs it can be used very similar to a dutch oven very easily just by turning the lid upside down put coals on top but you won't have that off the ground situation on the bottom that you have with a dutch oven we don't need that right now anyway what we're going to do today is we're going to cook up kind of like a casserole we've got one bag of vegetable recipe mix dried put that right in your pack we have one bag of Idaho and baby red potatoes dried. Put that right in your pack. The only thing that we have meat wise is we have a pork roast here. And we could use any type of meat that we got, including a squirrel, including a piece of venison, including a rabbit. It wouldn't matter. I've just got a pork roast here. I'm fixing this for supper tonight. So I'm going to eat pork. All of that will fit right into this pan. We've got some olive oil. We have our bamboo spoon slash spatula and a cutting board and then we'll use our fork at the fire we're gonna get ready to cook 
Okay, so first things first. You can see I've got this refrigerator grate sitting up on top of this, and what that allows me to do is move coals in and out, almost like a keyhole type situation where I can push coals up in there to make it hotter, pull coals out to cool it down. And I'm just going to put this roast and some olive oil in this pan. Okay, so we've got our pork roast on a cutting block here, pretty well done. We've dumped what was remaining of the oil, for the most part, out of our pan. Now we're going to add two cups of water and we're going to get it on the boil. we got plenty of fire to do that. about what this water bottle holds. So that's perfect. Put this back in the scout bag. And we'll get this dude on the boil here. Okay, get our lid here, pull off, our water's hot, a little olive oil in there ain't going to hurt anything. Let's add our mix here, put our garden mix in first, put our potatoes in second. Okay, mix that up real good in that hot water. Now, we're going to get our pork back over here. Set it down inside there, just like that. There we go. Put our lid back on. And this time, we'll just kind of shove him up over here into the coals where the heat is. Get rid of our grate. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to pull some coals up over the top of it. Just like this. And we're just going to let it sit there and simmer. Okay. Well, pull this thing out of the fire and knock the ashes off of it. Let's see what we got. Oh, man. Potatoes need to thicken up just a little bit more. That'll happen as it sits. It'll be a good rib sticking meal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. That's gonna be real good. Okay. Take this back to the house and feed the family. Guys, I appreciate you joining me for another video here in our K2 
cast iron cooking series. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I appreciate everything that you do for me, for my school, for my family. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thank you.